Evangelical Christians are a huge chunk of the American population. 34%, well over 100 million people, describe themselves as evangelical or born again. And recent studies have shown they're way more prone to believe conspiracy theories than most non-evangelicals. As of January, 27% of white evangelicals said they believe QAnon was completely or mostly accurate, and 49% thought Antifa was responsible for the capital violence. It's a striking trend, and one that experts say may be baked into the religion. You're primed by this fact. Evangelicals are always looking for evidence of the end of the world. And the early New Testament Christians continually talked about and looked forward to that day, or the day, or the last days. Evangelicals want the end of the world to happen. They're not afraid of it, they embrace it. And when you're embracing it, you're always looking for evidence that it's going to happen because that keeps your flock in line and keeps them energized and encouraged to keep worshiping because like it ends getting closer now, the ends getting closer now, don't give up. And when things don't work out as foretold, it's easy enough to explain. No matter what happens, they're going to keep moving that timeline and timeline out. For them, it's going to eventually end in Armageddon in the end of time. But it's going to, it's going to happen. It's just a matter of when. Sound familiar? You can't say what all the moves are to the people that are involved. This doomsday playbook is now integrated into American politics and pop culture. And even if you're not evangelical, there's been so many movies about the end of the world. Yeah, it sort of seeped out of the evangelical, you know, foundation and into all parts of American society. And that really picked up about 150 years ago. There was a guy named John Darby who had this idea called dispensationalism, which is the idea that there's going to be a rapture. You know, the, the Left Behind series that was really popular, Kirk Cameron was in the movie. That comes from Darby's idea. And that really became mainstream evangelical in the last 30 or 40 years with the writing of that book. Thanks to you, millions have heard the truth. Thanks to God. This isn't that new when you think about the American context. Can you give me that sort of like 400 year uh, zoom out about where we're at with this? So even going back to the colonial period, for instance, when Thomas Jefferson was running against John Adams, John Adams actually said that he was the Antichrist. And there were little old ladies in New England who buried their Bibles while he was president because they were terrified that he was really the Antichrist and going to take their Bibles away. And it's like every 50 years or so, someone finds a new way to sort of reinvent it, dig it up, revitalize it, and give it to a new audience in a new way, right? So we had the Great Awakening where pastors were preaching to thousands of people in fields all across America, talking about the end of time and, and sinners in the hands of an angry God and all these things. But then it evolves from there, right? Is coronavirus a sign of the end? Times. And if you really think about it, the internet is just an extension of guys like George Whitfield in the fields back in the Great Awakening, right? It goes from him to radio to television, now to TikTok. Jesus is coming back. He will be coming in the clouds. The problem with today's messaging? It's not just about the coming end times. Often, evangelical influencers and politicians are spreading partisan messages cloaked in religious rhetoric. Smash the delusion, father, of Joe Biden as our president. He is not. Right after the attack on the Capitol, 41% of white evangelicals said they either somewhat or completely agreed with the statement, if elected leaders will not protect America, the people must do it themselves, even if it requires taking violent actions. Pastors are cowards because they have to be because our, I can lose my job for any reason at any time without any legal recourse. They could fire me because of the shirt I wore on Sunday. So what pastors do is they try to be as bland and vanilla and non-controversial as possible. And the reality is that opens up this space for other voices to get in and influence their congregation. So instead you hear Hannity and, and Carlson and you know everybody else, right? You don't get that Christian perspective because Christian pastors just don't talk about it. The flock is leading the shepherd. Yeah, and I have many friends who say like, listen, Fox gets him for 14 hours a day. I get him for an hour a week. So what can I do in an hour a week to match the 14 hours a day? And I think for most pastors, the answer is just give up. So now religion is viewed through a political lens, not the other way around. Politics has become religion now for lots and lots of people. I have a lot of evangelical friends who say Democrats are not just wrong, they're evil. I don't hate anyone. I was raised in a way that is full, a heart full of love and always prayed for the president. And I still pray for the president. I pray for the president all the time. So don't mess with me when it comes to words like that. Like to vote for Democrats as a sinful act, 
that's never been that way in American history before. And unfortunately, pastors don't speak into that. They don't try to redeem that language. They don't try to make people see both sides. In 1978, 50% of white weekly churchgoers were Democrats, 50%. Today, it's 25%, right? The church was better when it had Democrats and Republicans sitting side by side, and now it's just all one thing. It's all one flavor all the time, and I think the church is worse for it.